Now, this is often something you should do first because it is a great way to break the ice. So I'm going to do that here. We're going to mess up code intentionally and show you that it's okay. Notice how I have an array bracket to the right there. I'm going to hit run, and you're going to get an error. And that's okay. Errors happen all the time. Lua is a what's called a loosely typed dynamic language, which means there are very little rules. There's no compiler for the most part. It just lets you write code and it tries its best to run it. And if it doesn't work, oh, well, it lets you know, right? And so you shouldn't be afraid to see these errors and that's okay. You can click where the error and it'll do its best to bring you to the file and line that it happened. So we're gonna hit stop here and see that this error is, it ex it's a parsing error. So it means we didn't even write code that failed. We couldn't even format it correctly. So let's try again with leaving off the T in print. We just go print. No parentheses, just, just print means nothing. Now we're gonna get a global error. So the code parsed correctly. It could tell that it was valid Lua. But when it went to run it, it's like, dude, I don't know who this uh, print is, or maybe it's incomplete. I'm not really sure what's going on here. So let's do print cow, but then we're gonna remove the T. So it even looks even closer to a real function, and it has a print C and write print C. So it looks like our print statement with a string. We're gonna run it again. And, and this time you got what's called a script error. And when they have a stack begin stack end, it just means that your code is executing line after line. We'll, we'll cover stacks, don't worry about that. What you're really interested in this is red thing of what was the error. And then it'll do its best in the stack to tell you where it occurred. So for now, you can just click the error. It said attempted to call a nil value. Now we haven't covered nil. Nil is nothing. So let's go to print real quick and I'll say nil. See how it's orange? So you know it's a, a magic word that you can use, just like blue is a magic function you can use. Nil is one of those magic words and it means nothing. So although nothing prints out as the word nil, it's the European version of nothing. So Americans will say nothing or nada or whatever. A lot of times you'll see tennis games where they'll say like 30 nil. It's just a representation of nothing. And in programming, there's no real representation of nothing. So they made it something, gave it a name, and then said nothing. So if you're fans of the never ending story, that should make sense. So we'll hit stop and we'll go back to cow and we'll mess up our print again, run again. And you'll see that it has an error. And that's fine. We'll cover why nil is a bad thing when you're trying to code. It's what the original creator of it called his billion dollar mistake. So his billion dollar mistake is what we have to live with. We have to live with nil and errors. <laughs> now there's one other way that you can cause errors like that by either misspelling things or calling them wrong or putting the, you know, it's not even formatted correctly. You can actually use errors. It's another magic function. I blew up. I'm not gonna even spell up. I blew up. Hit run. And you can see we caused an error intentionally. And that's fine. Sometimes it's helpful to say, hey, uh, I was trying to load a character's assets from the servers, like all the images, but they're not there. That's bad. I can't run the game without those. So you err on purpose, right? Just to let you know as the developer, hey, this is a problem.